Hi guys, my name's Marita. Today I want to share with you my top four tips for relatively new yoga teachers or yoga teachers who still feel like they're finding their footing as teachers. And my first big tip is to be really clear about what your intention is as a yoga teacher. Your big picture intention. So I don't mean an intention for a particular class, although that's a wonderful thing to have as well. But the big overarching reason why you're a yoga teacher, why are you drawn to share this practice? It could be something very simple. Perhaps you want to teach people how to breathe. And maybe you want to teach your students how to connect with their own bodies. Perhaps you want to encourage people to find self-acceptance and self-compassion through yoga. So what is your reason for teaching? What is the gift that you want to share with your students? And once you're really clear about what this big picture intention is, and it's something that may change over time, I want you to remind yourself of this intention often. So when you sit down to plan your classes for the week, keep this intention in mind. When it's all feeling really hard, you might be struggling to pay the bills one week or exhausted and setting your alarm for 4.30 a.m. again to get up and teach an early class. Remind yourself, why are you doing this? What has this practice brought to your life that you're wanting to pass on and to share with your students? My second tip is to teach what you love. So that could be a particular style or styles of yoga that you feel particularly drawn to. It could also be that you find you most love classes where perhaps the teacher weaves in a lot of philosophy. Or maybe you love classes where the teacher really knows their anatomy and gives fine detailed anatomical cues. Perhaps you're drawn to teachers who share a lot of themselves through the class and perhaps you don't like that at all. So you'll probably naturally find that you're emulating the teachers that you love. And that's a fantastic thing to do. You don't have to feel like you're copying. We all naturally emulate what we enjoy the most. And then don't feel pressured to change what you love. It can be very easy, especially as quite a new teacher, to feel like you have to please everyone. Maybe someone gives you a piece of feedback after class that they'd really like a stronger class. They're coming to yoga because they want to lose weight and they want to do some more flow and build some more heat. But perhaps what you love is a really nurturing, gentle practice, inviting compassion and ease. So rather than feeling like you have to please this student who's there for a different reason to you, or maybe you could refer them on to someone else. Say, I know this amazing teacher around the corner, I think you'd really like their, te their, te their classes. And I'm sure you'll find that this teacher responds, passes the favour back to you. So rather than trying to please everyone, students can feel that. They can feel the lack of authenticity when you're teaching something that's not what you feel connected with. Keep teaching exactly what it is that you love, that you feel strongly about. That's what you want out of a yoga practice. And your students will find you. My third tip is that once you've worked out your intention and you know what it is you love and how you want to share that intention and make that a reality for your students, is that now it's no longer about you. Make your teaching about your students. You're not there to demonstrate your own anatomical knowledge. You're not there to show off how skillfully you can choreograph 14 poses together on one side before changing sides. And you're certainly not in front of a class to show your own proficiency in asana. Meet your students where they're at in terms of physical ability, in terms of depth of knowledge, and choose language that speaks to your students. Explain things in a way that will resonate for them. You are there to serve your students, and that's an honor. That's an amazing thing. So every time you step in front of a class, be there for your students. Make it about them. 
explain concepts in a way that will resonate for your students, teach in a way that makes them feel positive about their own abilities, challenge them to a point that is appropriate for them. Always, it's about your students and not about you. My fourth and final tip is about you. Self-care as a yoga teacher is so important. If you're not filling your own cup, you have nothing left to give to your students. So that means maintaining your own practice, your asana practice, your meditation practice. This is more important than anything else when it comes to self-care. It also means learning to say no. If you've had a huge week and someone asks you to cover another class and you've got nothing left, say no. If you've got nothing to give, you've got nothing to give and you need to refill your own cup before you're ready to teach again. It might mean limiting the number of classes that you teach per week and perhaps having some income coming from somewhere else as well. Self-care is different for each of us. So learn what it is that you need to feel nourished, to feel full, so that you can pass that on, so that you can give to your students. So I hope you find this helpful. Thank you for joining me today. Namaste.